Okay, so it's day 154, and here's what's going on in Ukraine today. All right, I'm starting here with The Guardian. The Guardian does a great job of saying, you know, here are the major events, and then I, I spin off from there. Key Russian-held bridge into the occupied Kherson uh, has been hit with a barrage of rocket fires, up to 18 detonations, so at least a dozen plus times. Where's this bridge? Here's the map. It's this Antonikova uh, Oleski bridge. This here, here's Kherson, and here's the bridge in question. If they can destroy this bridge or at least injure it enough so that it can't be crossed, it will keep the Russians from being able to easily resupply. Okay, a uh, little bit more. UK Ministry of Defense said that the Russian private military company Wagner has likely succeeded in making tactical advances in the Donbass around the power plant. We talked about the power plant yesterday. It was carried in RT. Um, here is some more about the power plant. Russian forces capture Ukraine's second biggest power plant. It's a Soviet-style uh, coal-firing power plant, but it's a pretty big one, so it's, it's quite a capture. Unverified footage posted on social media appeared to show fighters from Russia's Wagner private military company posted in front of the power plant. Okay, so that's what we know about that. Russian forces continue to strike on civilian infrastructure in Kharkiv. The Russians deliberately target civilian infrastructure, objects, hospitals, schools, movie theaters, etc. Same playbook, same thing that they always do. But it's getting better. And I'll show you on the map what I mean by it's getting better. So this is Ukraine yesterday, or well, today. It's been updated as of today. And it, all the dots that you see are missile strikes. But I want you to pay close attention to where the red dots are. Red dot, red dot, red dot, red dot, red dot, red dot. And up in Kharkiv, you can't really see it because it's covered, but red and, red and orange dots. Okay, red and orange are within the last 6 to 12 hours. So it's that's what I mean by it's been getting better. I mean, that's not great, but it's still better. Okay, next, uh, Radio Free uh, Europe is uh, putting out something saying Russian troops are engaged in massive redeployment. And we've heard this from both the Russians and the Ukrainians that they're shifting to the south to the fight in the Kherson. Uh, Security Council Secretary Oleski Danov said the redeployments were taking place. But what we're getting now is a huge amount of help, like Himmers. Okay. Uh, Nat Natalia Hemikuk, spokeswoman for the Operational Command South, said the counteroffensive in the south of Ukraine is moving forward. Russian army is demobilized. Now, the Russian army is saying, no, we're not. This is all hysteria. Deputy head of the Moscow-backed administration in Herzon, Kril Stremosmusov, uh, initially downplayed the importance of the strike, saying a hysteria that is being spun in the media about how the war is going to be decided on this bridge is just a bluff. I don't think he really means that. I, I think it really is. And here's the that same uh, bridge, and this is about where it is on the map. Okay, so it's it's close to deeply uh, held Russian territory. By the way, while I'm talking about this deeply held Russian territory, look at this with the strikes. You were talking about Himmers just now, and look how deeply. So all this in orange is Russian territory. And look how deeply they're striking into Russian territory. That's called Himmers. Okay, so before you could only hit in this very small range around the periphery. Now they're hitting very deeply into Kherson with Himmers. Okay, next, I just thought this was interesting. This came out today, some 45% of Ukrainians ready to participate in restoration, 90% expect compensation. So this was a political poll. 90% of Ukrainians believe that Russia should be compensated for the economic and infrastructure losses that result from the war. Okay, that's, I mean, nothing surprising about that. I would expect that. Most Ukrainians are quite optimistic about the restoration of the country. 43% that it'll take five years, 28% percent believe it'll take up to 10 years okay okay i can see that now this is what i thought was really really interesting for our purposes 73 now in in political polls you have like a right track wrong track and we have like i don't know 70 80 percent of the u.s thinks is on the wrong track right now uh for different reasons right like um democrats and republicans have different reasons to feel that they're on the wrong track but a overwhelming majority feel that they're on the wrong track 73% of respondents said that things in Ukraine are moving in the right direction. 
Wow, in the middle of all this, they believe it's moving the right direction. And only 12% express the opposite opinion in the middle of all this. And that's why I thought this political poll was important to show you today. Okay, so what's going on in the ports of Kronomorsk, Odessa, and Pivdeni? Preparatory work is being carried out to ensure the loading of the dispatch of grain. And how they're going to do that, they're going to caravan these. Uh, there's a lead ship that will kind of direct everybody and they'll follow it out through that. And hopefully they won't get hit with missiles on the way out. Now, at the same time, Moscow-backed official in a Russian-occupied Kherson region said the southern cities of Odessa and Mykolaiv will soon be liberated from Ukraine as Russia ups its attacks on the two Black Sea regions. So while they're starting to move rain out, the Russians are already threatening, we're going to liberate that city, which will mean that this whole process will collapse. Okay, anyway, um, some more fun. New secret Russian development is an unpleasant surprise for American himmers. That is, a military expert, Alexei Lentkov, said uh, that the American system has been hacked and our secret development will be deployed in all directions. A good system, I can't name it yet, but it works much greater distances, instantly fixing the launch site for the Americans. This is an unpleasant surprise. Well, that's yet to be determined. They have now uh, claimed repeatedly that Himmers have been destroyed and they haven't. Uh, Lavrov denigrates the West. Now, we've been talking about Lavrov for the last few days. He's been on this goodwill African tour trying to win friends and influence people. And what he's doing is going to these African countries trying to create converts and trading partners. And most of the African nations have been kind of giving him a little bit of a stiff arm saying, look, we're cool with you, but we also want to maintain our uh, relations with the West. Or, um, I'm not for the West, I'm not for the East, I'm for me. That's, that's what the Ugandan president said yesterday. Uh, so, he's now in uh, Ethiopia, and Sergei Lavrov in Ethiopia, he lands in their capital city. And Ethiopia was considered a pretty close uh, ally of the West until a conflict broke out in November 2020 in its northern region of Tigray. So I had to look that up because I wasn't familiar with Ethiopian politics. This is the northern region, region and there's this like breakaway, um, the Tigray defense forces were fighting with the Ethiopian National Defense Forces. Both have committed war crimes. By March of 2020, they, they declared an indefinite humanitarian truce. But... In the process, um, the, the Ethiopians, you know, had Western pressure on them. They you know, got to kind of calm this thing down, and they are no longer as sympathetic with the West. We confirmed our support for those efforts, which the government is making to stabilize the situation, said Lavrov. Well, okay, so that's good. Crack down on your people. Uh, and Lavrov said this during this uh, with his counterpart, Demike Mekonen. Now, uh, Demike said his country was grateful for Russia's unwavering support and is helping us safeguard Ethiopia's sovereignty, which is kind of interesting. I mean, you'd think that you'd be in, in Ukraine's corner with the same kind of, anyway, I'm just saying, whatever. Um, and Lavrov also concluded, I'm sure the overwhelming majority of the world continues to not want to live as if colonial times have come back. Now, he keeps beating this drum of colonial times because it undermines the West. And Russia, to its credit, was never a African colonizer um, because it always was trying to, to its discredit, colonize all its neighbors around them. So uh, it can, with a straight face, he can say, we've never been colonizers of Africa, and the Africans are kind of swallowing this. Now, at the same time, we have here <laughs> EU diplomacy head Burrell complains, uh, Lavrov is going to Africa to trying to convince Africans that European sanctions are to blame for everything that's happening. And the entire West repeats this. I'm going to Africa to say the opposite, and it has nothing to do with it, and nobody picks it up. Okay, so that's what he's complaining about. And I saw this, this is in Pravda, but I've seen this in, in another uh, article as well where he was complaining about it. And that's, uh, I mean, I'd be upset about that too. Okay, last but certainly not least, we're going to end with this fun. Former Russian president presents future map of Ukraine. Ukraine is more likely to be reduced to Kiev and the surroundings than to ever encompass Crimea and Donbass Republic, says uh, Medyev. 
uh, his, he shows the first map in the and he says this in the mind of the president of Ukraine, damaged by psychotropic substances. This is what the map of his country's bright future will look like, and this is a map uh, before the 2014 invasion, which he calls uh, the 2014 U.S. backed. Uh, coup or whatever in, in his stuff. Now, then he shows this map, which shows Ukraine is this tiny little slice around Kiev. Poland takes these seven districts. Uh, Romania takes a few districts for some reason I don't understand. And then Russia is uh, taking almost swallowing up more than half the country here. And uh, that's what Medev... Now, if you think that this is just haha ha, RT is just making stuff up because it's propaganda. RT is not making it up. Pravda carried the same kind of map. And there's a link to Telegram. This is Dmitry Med Medyev's Telegram channel where he's showing this map. So it's not just that this is what the Russians are seeing. This is what the Russians are saying. This is the former president of Russia saying this. And that's what's going on on Wednesday, July 27th, day 154.